One of the most common questions I get asked is, which is better to trade in, weekly or monthly options? In this video, I answer that question. Hello everyone and welcome back to My Life of Learning. My name is Randy Perez. Please know that I am not a financial advisor and this video is not meant to be investment advice of any kind. I am, however, a 22 plus year stock and option trader as well as real estate investor. Before we get started, I just ask one thing of you. Please hit the like button to support this channel. I'm about to give you some really awesome information that I know you're going to find great benefit in. So if you like the kind of material that I provide for you on a regular basis on this channel, please support it by hitting the thumbs up like button. Thank you for that. Let's get started. In this video, I address one of the most common questions I get asked about. It's quite possibly the number one question that I get asked. Which is better, selling weekly or monthly options? Let's go through the advantages and disadvantages of each of these different time frames, and at the very end of this video, I'm going to share with you which time frame is my favorite and why that's the case. In October of 2005, the Chicago Board of Options Exchange introduced weekly options to traders. Since that time, their popularity has been increasing. In fact, in a recent article that was written about weekly options, it said that weekly options, they now make up about 20% of the stock market's daily option volume. But I think you'll agree with me that just because something is popular, it doesn't actually make it a good idea for us automatically. Now, it could quite possibly be a good idea, but popularity alone does not help me make a decision. I want to understand why something is good or why it's bad. So let's dive in to figure that out. Like always, I want to give you the absolute best information I can, so I didn't just lean on my own personal preference when it came to answering this question. I will tell you though, I encourage you to watch until the very end of this video where I give you the reasons why I prefer one over the other. I believe those reasons are a lot more compelling than some of the facts that I'm about to present to you now. In preparing for this video, I did a lot of independent research about the data behind weekly versus monthly options. In doing that research, the vast majority of the articles I read said that one of the advantages of weeklies over monthlies is that they allow the option buyers to purchase for very little money options have the potential to yield massive returns. The reason is that you're not paying much premium up front for that short-term option. If you happen to be right in your direction, then you could take a very low price option and turn it into a huge profit. In fact, many of the articles made comments like, if an option buyer wanted to bet on the direction that a stock would move, or if they wanted to gamble on the stock's general direction. However, as you know, if you've been watching my channel for a while, I absolutely do not promote buying short-term options. And personally, I don't like gambling with my hard-earned money. I do, however, like to make investments and trades when the odds are in our favor. In fact, the majority of the time, the only options I'm willing to buy are longer term or leap options. So we're going to consider this subject from the perspective of selling options. Briefly, the difference between a weekly and a monthly option is that weekly options expire every Friday, whereas monthly options expire on the third Friday of each month. But why would someone want to trade weekly options versus monthly options? When it comes to generating income, weeklies, they tend to have the upper hand. If the option you sold is at the money or very close to it, that time decay will dissipate very fast over those last few days of that option's life. However, if you're trying to sell out of the money options on a weekly basis, you just won't get much premium for those options. So if you're trying to sell out of the money options, this advantage that weekly options have over monthly options typically does not really apply, especially as your short strike price gets farther and farther out of the money. So this advantage is that you're able to potentially collect more time decay by selling four weekly options a month as compared to one monthly option. And that's really the biggest argument in favor of weeklies. However, there are definitely other aspects of trading options that you should consider. For example, the bid-ask spread for weeklies tends to be wider than the bid-ask spread for monthlies. The reason is that there's not much volume for those weekly options. For example, let's take a look at Apple stock here. Now, I'm purposely picking one of the most popular, highly traded stocks in the market right now. But even in Apple's case, notice the difference in open interest as well as the bid-ask spreads. The nearest term option is the one that expires in six days on May the 14th at the very top. In the blue rectangle, notice the bid is $1.44 and the ask is $1.48. That spread is not very wide at all. That's only four cents. Also notice under the far right column in the blue rectangle, which is open interest, that there's just over 11,000 open option contracts. Now, if you go down to the next expiration, which is May 21st in the red rectangle, that is actually the third Friday of the month or the monthly option. Notice that the bid ask spread is only three cents as compared to four cents from the previous week. However, open interest is over three times as much 
as the weekly open interest that expires in five days. Finally, let's look at the weekly that expires the week after the third Friday of the month, which is May 28th in the purple box. Notice that the bid ask spread is the widest of all three at five cents per share. Also notice at the far right of the purple rectangle that the open interest is only a tenth of what it is for the monthly option. Let's look at another example here of a stock that doesn't have quite as much volume as Apple, but is still a highly traded stock and a well-liked stock in Disney. Again, you see the next three expiration dates. At the top in the blue rectangle, we see the May 14th expiration options and notice the spread between the bid and the ask. The bid is $2.73 and the ask is $2.92. The open interest on the far right of the blue box is just over 1,600 contracts. Now going down to the monthly option, which expires on May 21st, notice that the spread between the bid and the ask is only five cents and the open interest is just over 2,000 contracts. Finally, notice at the very bottom in the purple box, the May 28th weekly option that the bid and ask spread is 25 cents per share and the open interest is about a tenth what it is for the monthly option. So you can see here that consistently for weekly options, you will not have as much open interest and as a result, you will see more slippage or the spread between the bid and the ask will be wider. So with weekly options, you won't experience quite as good of a price execution as you would for a monthly option. Another potential negative of weekly options as compared to monthlies is the cost if you have to pay for commissions on your option trades. Now some of you may get free commission and others may not. For our accounts, the commission to sell options has come way down from where it was years ago, but we still have to pay a commission on every option trade that we do. The commission is not very high, usually it's about a dollar per contract, but it can add up over time. Since you're trading weekly as compared to monthlies, there's an average of 4.3 weeks per month, your commission will potentially cost you on average at least three times more than if you traded monthlies. Before we dive into why I prefer trading monthlies, I just want to recap here because so far, nothing I've said, in my opinion, is a really good reason to not trade weeklies. In fact, you might say the argument up until this point is most likely in favor of trading weeklies. You get faster time decay, but you do give up tighter bid-ask spreads and you have to deal with transaction or commission costs, which will be higher, and there's not as much liquidity. However, I'm going to be honest with you. If I could yield a substantially higher return, before that I had to deal with wider bid-ask spreads, a little higher commission costs, and less open interest, depending on how good the return was, I'd probably go for it. So to me, the facts here don't really cover the major reasons why I prefer to sell monthly options over weeklies. So here are my main reasons for preferring to trade monthlies versus weeklies. First of all, as you can see here, we like to maintain a very diverse option trading portfolio. That way if one position for some reason experiences a sharp decline, it only affects a small percentage of our portfolio. In fact, we target, if at all possible, only allowing any one position to make up about 5% at most of our portfolio. Many times it's more like around 3-4% to of the entire portfolio. And we also like to keep our money working for us. We don't want it sitting on the sidelines doing nothing. As a result, right now in our main option trading account, we have 33 short option positions. A lot of them are put options and a handful of them are covered call positions. If we had to rotate the positions out every single week, we go from making around 40 trades a month to approximately 130 trades a month. That'd be a tremendous amount of work. It would basically be almost a full-time job trying to keep up with when to close those positions out, what to replace them with, and then entering those new positions as well as the bookkeeping behind keeping track of the profit and loss of each position. I don't want to spend that much time trading options. So for me, one of the biggest factors is time. I definitely want to have a diversified portfolio because you just never know when some wild story may come out and just destroy one of your positions. But having at most 5% exposed in any one position, it really minimizes the damage that a random event may cause. Another major reason why I prefer monthlies over weeklies is that many times we're able to close that monthly position out early. Notice an example of that here. These are the trades that we've made in Bristol Myers over the past month and a half. In the top red rectangle, notice that on March 19th, we sold the third Friday of April $60 put options for $1.06 per share. Three weeks later, we were able to buy the option back for only $0.09 cents per share. So we made almost the entire option premium, but we were able to close that option out a week early. We waited a few days until April 13th, and when Bristol Myers came back down in price, we sold the third Friday of May $62.50 put option for $1.46 per share. Then 15 days later on April 28th, we bought the option back for $0.39 cents per share. Again, we made a huge chunk of the profit and we were still able to close that option out three and a half weeks early. 
Finally, in the bottom purple rectangle, the most recent trade we did was two days after we closed out the May $62.5 put option. Bristol Myers had another drop, so we sold to open a new option with the same expiration day, the third Friday of May, and pocketed $1.17 per share, even though we sold that option at a strike price, which was $0.50 cent lower than the previous one we had closed out a few days earlier. Let me share with you an even better example of this in our Walgreens trade so far this year. Here you see the trades we've done since December 30th of last year or about four and a half months ago. Notice up top in the very first line in the red box that we sold the third Friday of January $39 puts on December 30th. If you look over to the right under the receive from sale, you see that we pocketed $1.23 per share. Notice that just seven days later, we were able to close this trade out for a cost of $0.23 cents per share. So we pocketed 81% of the monthly options premium in just one week. And then look at the next line below that in the blue rectangle. That same day, we rolled our short strike price up by a dollar and sold the third Friday of February $40 strike put options for $1.27 per share. Fast forward only seven days, and we close that position out for 24 cents per share. So we were able to pocket $1.03 per share, which was again, 81% of the monthly option premium in just one week. We closed that position out on January 13th because Walgreens no longer had any good entry points in my opinion. So we immediately put that money back to work in a brand new position. However, two months later, Walgreens came back down to a spot that we felt comfortable selling put options at. So as you can see in the purple rectangle, on March 5th, we sold the third Friday of April, $45 put option and received $1.64 per share. Fast forward only 11 days or just under two weeks and we close that position out for 15 cents per share. So we're able to pocket $1.49 per share or 90.9% .9 of the monthly options premium in just 11 days. We waited several weeks because Walgreens had experienced a pretty large price increase. Then on March 29th, as you can see in the orange rectangle, we sold the third Friday of May $50 put option for $2 per share. Now we had to stay in this one a little bit longer. The expiration date originally was May 21st, but as you can see in the far left column, under the purchase date, we bought it back early on May 3rd, which is almost three weeks early for only 16 cents per share. The result, we pocketed a net of $1.84 per share or 92% of the potential profit. We we're actually able to close this short option out three weeks early. The next day, as you can see at the very bottom line, we sold again that same expiration day, the third Friday of May, $52.5 put option for $1.72 per share. And as of today, four days later, we're still in this position. Just because you sell monthly options, it does not mean that you have to stay in them for the entire month. As you have seen here, many times we're able to exit these monthly positions early and put that money immediately back to work in a brand new monthly option position. By the way, if that was really useful, what I just share with you, then I'd love it if you just give this video a like. Just bump the like button. And thank you so much for doing that. So just remember that just because you're selling monthly options, it does not mean that you can't close those options out on a weekly basis. By selling monthly options, we get a larger option premium up front than if we had sold weekly options. So we're having to do less trades every month. We get paid more up front, and we don't have to deal with coming up with, as far as our account size and diversity, 30 plus high probability option trades every single week. And I would say since we're able to close so many of them out early, we really are not missing out on much, if any, additional income, which is really, in my opinion, the only real advantage of doing weeklies. Here is the third very important reason why I prefer trading monthlies as compared to trading weeklies. One of our goals in option trading is to consistently make high probability trades. The income we make from option trading is used either live on, to reinvest in growing our option trading account size, or in buying what we consider undervalued or solid fair price companies. We are not in this to gamble. As such, we want to make as high probability trades as possible. No, every single one of our trades doesn't turn out the way we plan for it to. Sometimes we do get them wrong, but the vast majority of the time, we're consistently profitable with our option trades. The reason for that is because before we do a trade, first we make sure that the company we're trading in is fundamentally sound. We also wait until there are good technical reasons to enter that option position. I see many traders out there that say that their only requirement is that the stock is throwing off big option premiums, which means that there's big volatility in the stock. If you're only risking several thousand dollars, that may not be that scary. But if you plan to do this for a living in the future or to do it in a big way, to me, that is very scary. I would not want a huge wad of my hard-earned capital at risk 
with the sole requirement being that I'm trading in a highly volatile stock. Personally, that sounds like a recipe for eventual disaster. By trading in monthlies, we can devote enough time to finding option trades that have a higher probability of winning as compared to on a weekly basis, having to figure out how to roll 30 plus option positions, and as a result, be forced into doing questionable option trades. Our number one goal in trading options is to protect our capital. Our number two goal is to get as high of a return as possible while protecting that capital. By trading monthlies, we're able to consistently put nice wads of cash into our pocket while we trade in what I consider solid, stable, and mature companies. If you'd like to receive alerts as soon as we make trades similar to the trades I talked through in this video, consider the benefits of becoming a patron at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see more information on how to find option trading opportunities, check out the video at the link above and description below entitled, How Do You Identify Option Trading Opportunities? Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.